Hey everybody, welcome back to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson. I am a technical consultant for Altium. And today we are going to do a follow-up video on our previous video introducing S parameters. Now, in this video, what I wanna talk about are a few of the properties of S parameters and then how you can actually use them in circuit design as well as in floor planning your PCB. I'll link to an actual uh, resource that provides a lot of information that you would need if you wanted to start playing around with S parameters. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's go ahead and get started. So in the previous video, what we looked at was kind of the definition of S parameters in terms of powers that are at our two ports. So we have our matrix here, S11, uh, S12, S21, and S22. And then this is multiplied onto our input powers at each of our ports. So we basically have kind of a network that looks like this. So we've got, you know, A1 coming in, and we've got A2 coming in, and then we've got a B1 coming out here and then we've got a B2 coming out here. This is everything that we need to know about this network or this uh, device under test uh, that we're looking at conceptually with our S parameters, okay? And this defines all of the information. You could actually use this S parameter matrix for a device to link it with other devices to actually design circuits or to design what are called cascaded networks. So let's just suppose for a moment that this is my network number two. Let's say I have another network over here. And this is network number one. How do the S parameters of these two networks combine to give us an equivalent set of S parameters? Now remember, this thing is gonna have its own set of S parameters. And then this thing is also gonna have its own set of S parameters. So we'll just call this S and then S prime. So how did these two sets of parameters combine to give me a total S parameter matrix for this network? Now, as it turns out, you can form cascaded S parameters. We'll just call that S cas, but it is actually not equal to the product of these two S parameter matrices. So I can't just multiply my S parameter values together to get a cascaded matrix. So what I'm gonna do here in just a moment is to kind of show how you can actually break these down into another parameter set in order to get this cascaded matrix. Before we do that, it's important to kind of think about how this actually works and what we're actually trying to get. You know, when we link up two networks like this, we're generally sending in an A1 right here. We're not sending it in right there in the middle. And then we'll have a B1 coming out right here from reflection. And then that's our reference. And then what we would be trying to do is figure out what is the B2 that's coming out right here from transmission. And then what is the B1 that is lost coming into the input port here? So just like the case in the previous video where we were trying to figure out the S parameters of just this matrix, we don't actually need to know like all of the little itty bitty pieces that go into making this network. Same thing here. We can actually just use the two S parameter matrices and get a cascaded S parameter matrix. And I'll show you how here in just a moment. This is actually really useful because, you know, this network could actually be, uh, let's just say it could be a filter. And this could be, uh, let's just say this could be another type of filter. So we could have like two filters in series. If we have two networks like this, we may wanna figure out what is the total S parameter matrix so that we don't have to sit here and analyze what are these signals going in between the two in order to try and figure out how a signal coming in interacts with everything and then transforms into this B2 that ends up coming out. This might sound a little bit uh, odd to think about when we talk about cascaded S parameters. Let's take a look at a little resource here so we can actually see how we can use all of these different S parameter matrices to form circuits. 
The type of uh, situation that we're talking about here is when we have three networks cascaded like this, basically in series, right? And typically this happens when you have a network number one could be like an impedance matching network, maybe it's a filter. Here, the DUT might be like what we've been talking about, the device under, under test, maybe it's something that you wanna measure and it has its own set of S parameters. And then here, network number two could be like an output impedance matching port, maybe it's also a filter. The total S parameters are not always this product of the three matrices for the individual networks. Generally what we do is we will convert to some other network parameters and there's a whole uh, bunch of other network parameter sets but some popular ones are T parameters and then the ABCD parameters. Every little circuit element that you might want to combine into a network will have some uh, ABCD parameters or S parameters or T parameters. They have these different network parameters parameter sets. So here what I'm showing on this slide is up in the top left, you can see that this is a transmission line section that is defined. Maybe it's in a, a schematic or maybe you want to put it onto a PCB, but it has an S parameter matrix and that S parameter matrix is given by this expression here in the central column. Now it also has another parameter set called an ABCD matrix. And this CH is a hyperbolic cosine function. The SH is the hyperbolic sine function. Same thing in these other expressions. What you can do is if you wanna say, take a transmission line section, put it in series with some arbitrary impedance, let's just say it's a resistor, you could actually take the S parameter matrix for both of these and then put them into ABCD matrix form, or you could put them into T matrix form. And then you could use the ABCD matrix or the T matrix to then multiply those together. And that's going to give you a new matrix that tells you exactly how this network responds uh, to an input signal. So basically what this slide is showing you is what the S parameter values are for all these different types of impedances, right? So here we've got like a stub on a transmission line. Here for number three, we've got a parallel impedance. It's actually written as an admittance. So it's the inverse of an impedance, but it's placed in shunt configuration, really anything. Here on the next slide, again, you can see all sorts of different options. Here we've got a pi network in uh, number seven. Number six is for an ideal transformer. Here we've got a T network, so this could be a T filter. Here we've got a junction between two different transmission lines. Here we've got an attenuator, so this could be like an RF element that you buy off the shelf, really anything. The point behind showing all of this is that for each of these S parameter matrices, there is also an associated ABCD matrix or a T matrix. Now, how do we use these alternative matrices? Well, let's just suppose that I wanna take a T network and then I wanna combine it with, let's say, the transmission line section here in number one. If I know this ABCD matrix for all of those different elements, what I can do is I can very easily cascade the ABCD matrices. And by cascade, I just mean I can get a single combined ABCD matrix by multiplying each of the matrices together and that will give me a combined matrix. So basically what that does is it tells me the current and voltage at each side of this network. That's related by this matrix equation right here. So pretty simple. Once I know the ABCD matrix for the combined network, I can convert that back into S parameters for my cascaded network. So I go from S parameters into ABCD parameters and then back to S parameters. And that tells me everything I need to know about the circuit. This is really important to know because if you're doing anything in MATLAB, I think this, this happens in Mathematica as well. If you take a S parameter matrix for two different circuit elements and you try and cascade them together, one of the internal algorithms will actually convert to an intermediate parameter set. So basically what you're doing by hand Mathematica or MATLAB will actually apply this type of thing for you and will use an intermediate parameter set to calculate the cascaded network. It will do that for you automatically. You don't have to script it yourself, but if you wanted to do some kind of script yourself that actually allows you to do this kind of cascading directly with S parameters, you could do it with this intermediate matrix. So here what I'm showing at the bottom is basically a general conversion back from ABCD parameters into S parameters. So again, if you know all of your S parameters, then you can convert to ABCD parameters and vice versa. And that basically tells you everything you need to know about your circuits. So have fun going back and combining all of your different circuit elements together in order to get a combined S parameter matrix. Now there's a reference down here at the bottom of this windows from Casper. This reference, it has 
all of this information that you're seeing on these slides combined in it, and it's got all of the different formulas that you would need to actually convert between an S matrix and then these other matrices. So that's a really great concept for RF engineers. It's a really great reference if you want to uh, learn more about S parameters and intermediate parameter sets. So I highly recommend you go check it out and we'll put it in the description so you can go and download that paper. All right, everybody, so check out the description. I've got a link to the PDF from Caspers that actually has all of those different conversions in there, as well as the S parameters and ABCD parameters for all of the different circuit elements that you might wanna combine in order to do this stuff where we're actually combining different pieces together to actually form a much larger network of circuit elements. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave those questions and comments in the comments section, and stay tuned for more videos on signal integrity, as well as more videos on component selection, layout, all the stuff you guys love. Thanks, everybody, and don't forget to call your fabricator.